Hi, I'm Laura. Welcome back to The Sewing Room. Today I'm going to talk about one of the things that uh, a lot of people who sew kind of dread. <laughs> so let's get started. Alright, now there's really no way around it. Uh, once people in your circle know that you know how to sew, uh, they will start asking you to hem their pants. Um, especially jeans, um, especially if you're like me and you're a short girly who has a lot of short girlies in your family. <laughs> Hemming jeans is something um, that is really an important skill to have if you know how to sew and it's kind of dreaded um, because it can be kind of tricky but I'm going to show you today the easiest possible way to hem jeans. All right these jeans are fresh off of my uh, requester. Uh, I need to shorten them by four and a quarter inches. So I, you know, obviously trying them on uh, right side out and then flipping them back. Can't leave them like this, so I'm going to instead turn them inside out and then flip this up and then press this into position at the spot where I want the hem to sit in the end. Now a lot of jeans, and actually I love this because I find them more comfortable to wear, are actually made with stretchier fabrics uh, than they used to be and uh, it's also quite a lot thinner so you may not need a special needle or ironically uh, instead of a jeans needle if your jeans needle isn't working great for this fabric you might want to try a stretch needle um, because it could be the uh, spandex or lycra content in your jeans is what's making your needle skip instead of the thickness of the material which isn't really all that thick nowadays. Alright, so. Oh, I, I eyeballed that wrong. Let's get that right. Closer. That's better. What I have here on my ironing board is a sleeve board, which is kind of like a miniature ironing board. If you don't have something like this, it is possible to work flat on your uh, ironing board, but it's going to be a little bit more annoying, frankly. Um, but I'll show you how that works after on the second leg. First leg, so I'm just measuring, getting it hopefully the correct length at the seam. Good hard press. I have my uh, iron on a pretty high setting, um, but um, if, if you're worried about the fabric, or especially if your fabric uh, has a lot of spandex or uh, spandex or... So I just checked the tag and realized uh, these jeans are actually polyester rayon, polyester, cotton, and spandex. Um, so I definitely should not have had this on such a high setting. Um, I'm turning the iron down now to wool, um, which is hopefully high enough to give me a nice crease, but not high enough to actually damage the fabric.
Now if you don't have a sleeve board or even a small ham or a seam roll and all you have is an ironing board and an iron, you can still do this. You just uh, start with the jeans actually right side out, fold up your hem length, And the trick is you're actually going to press, you're still going to be pressing from the inside, but you're going to press just the bottom part and then turn it around. So actually it's very similar to how you might sew at the machine if your free arm, if you either don't have a free arm or if your free arm is too big for this hem. I'm just measuring, if you can see inside my I'm measuring that length. It's still a little short. And if you're feeling really finicky, you could have the person try it on, check your length, fold it into this position, um, either safety pin it or pin it, and have them try it on again to make sure this is exactly what they want. But, you know, Things being as they are, an eighth of an inch one way or the other is not going to make me lose any sleep. So pay extra attention to those seams because that's the thickest thing we're going to sew through. And again, I'm just kind of lifting, oops, lifting out of the way. Once you have it all pressed, if you want to just give it a good whack, um, basically just don't whack any crease you don't want to keep. So leave leave those edges alone on the outer edges of the of the pants. And you can actually do that twice. Again, just being careful not to hit these creases I don't want. Alright, now that that's good and marked, or good and pressed, I'm going to open it up. And now I need to measure an inch down from that crease. I'm going to mark a line there and then cut off uh, one inch below or one inch above where I want the hemline to be. This doesn't have to be, you know, big production. You could get out the chalk mark and do all that other stuff and do it quote unquote properly. But sometimes uh, people who want their pants hemmed just want their pants hemmed. Don't necessarily need you to pull out all of the stops if the job gets done. Alright, here's the part that kind of feels like a trick. 
this this really thick area here is the part that is going to be difficult to sew through. Um, and you can see with most jeans we have one side where it is kind of a full fell seam and then one side where it's just a plain seam that's been uh, turned open. Now probably most domestic machines could sew through even that many layers of the pressed open seam. So uh, you can kind of uh, hedge your bets and, and hope that maybe that will sew just fine. But this part is really, really thick uh, and tough, and it's going to be difficult even to get it to even properly turn. So the way around that is, what you do is you measure, you can measure, you can eyeball, about halfway up from your hem and just put a little clip. So then when you fold under the rest of the hem, that part actually is going to just flip straight up without being folded. So go ahead and just double fold everywhere else on the hem, press it, put it up here, and then press this really well. I actually like to fold the hem in place and then take my second fold up to that line. I just find that easier. I, th I think it gets me a cleaner result and a more even look. And again, you can do this with or without a sleeve board. I do. I have a sleeve board, so I like to use one. But um, if you don't have one, you can still do it this way too. All right, here we go. Oh, other end. You can use pins here, but once I have this all pressed, I do kind of like to just add some clips. Just to hold everything in place while I press the other side. <laughs> Out the board. We have the pants right side out. I haven't clipped that yet, so time to clip. sure how well you'll be able to see from this angle but if I open it out it's the same procedure it's just when you don't have the smaller board you have you do have to it takes a little longer because you can't cover quite as big an area at once but it will still work sometimes you have to work with what you got 
I love my sleeve board. It was one of my first sewing tools I bought. You can kind of tell. <laughs> um, I suppose you could ultimately use a little bit of your um, anything really, but just an ironing board is better than nothing. I like gadgets probably a lot more than the next person. I would almost say I'm a gadget person. I love gadgets, but you don't always need an extra gadget. I just say gadgets sometimes make things easier, but you don't always have to have one. And I'm getting all twisted up. And for those of you who don't sew, this is why the people in your life who sew don't like hemming pants. It is tedious. <laughs> kind of thankless, too. But just thank your person. I don't have uh, this color thread. It's You can see it's kind of a gold, but kind of a darker gold. And that could also just be from the blue of the jeans kind of you know, washing out over it. Um, and so rather than have the wrong color here, I am just going to use nice dark navy blue, which hopefully won't show too much um, and will uh, look nice. All right, so free arm machines are great. Uh, they're super convenient, um, but sometimes you're, you don't have one <laughs> or sometimes your hem is still too narrow to go around the free arm, and so um, I actually heard this recently described as a hamster on a wheel, which I thought was so cute. Let me make sure that you can see that. So I'm going to start actually away from the thickest part um, of the seam, um, and actually I'm going to try to start in the back, just in case the stitching isn't perfectly beautiful. I'd rather have it not be perfectly beautiful uh, in the back. So, ideally this thread is going to uh, blend in really well. So if it wobbles a little bit as I'm stitching, it won't necessarily be a big deal, but I would always like it to be nice and even. So if I put it at exactly half an inch, this will uh, just barely hit where that is. And so I'm, I have the angle here right now so you can see the way I'm going to sew this and I'll I'll show you the other side uh, from a slightly different angle so that you can hopefully have a full picture of what I'm doing. So I'm just going to start by anchoring my stitches with a zero length stitch. And then I'm going to, this is like a, a 10 stitches to inch or two and a half mil. And if that turns out to be too small, I will lengthen it, but we'll see. If your machine seems to be struggling when you hit these thick seams, there's nothing wrong with taking your foot off the pedal and just using the hand wheel to turn to get through that thicker area. Saves the motor, um, gives you a lot of control over what's going on. Um, and I think it's also slightly less likely to skip a stitch. Um, because things are just going a little slower. And just now I, I did that because it looked like I was getting a little bunching right on this edge. So um, sometimes I'll stop with the needle down and just lift the presser foot and make sure everything's going. Again, this fabric is a little thin and pretty stretchy, so I'm kind of keeping an eye out for any, any bubbles along the way. I'm not going to lie, this is very thick, but again, it's only two layers of how thick it could be versus four. So 
that helps a lot. Finishing up at the end with just more zeros and done. And to anyone who might say, oh no, you're supposed to sew top stitching from the top because it doesn't look the same. Well, first of all, I'm hemming your pants for free, so I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> uh, second of all, um, I, I, I think it looks really similar, and who's looking that closely at the hem of your jeans anyway? So anyway, that's that's why. Like, technically, the absolute correct way to do top stitching is, would be actually in this orientation, but I would rather be able to see what I'm doing and know for sure that I'm catching that fold than wonder, did I get it right, um, and have to do it over again. <laughs> All right, side two, angle two. Once again, starting slightly off of one of the bulky seams and at the back with a zero length stitch just to anchor things and then going to regular stitch length, trying not to knock the tripod. When I was in grad school, one of our assignments about lighting, um, I actually did photos of one of my friends knitting, uh, just her hands, and I got a note back from my teacher. I have never had to do this for a job, so basically calling me a weirdo. What, what, gosh, what would Marcy say if she saw me now? Okay, now I'm starting to see a little bit of bubbling here, and that's probably just the weird angle I'm holding this, just to be sure. Needle down. Okay, yeah, it was just my angle. Back where I started, could even go over a little, go back to zero stitch length, and be done. Oh, I thought it was, I thought my needle was up and it wasn't. There we go. And you could just be done here, but if you've are kind of a neat freak. Could turn off the light. Take your scissors and just trim that. Will this fray a little? Yes, a little, but it is extremely tough fabric. It is several layers of extremely tough fabric. It is tightly woven fabric and it has been stitched over. So if it does fray, it's only gonna fray back to the stitching. 
Um, and at that point you could add something to secure it, but I have literally never had it be a problem. Um, if you're nervous about it, you could take a little fray check and just finish that edge with a little fray check. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I hope this was helpful. If you've been here before, welcome back. Either way, hope to see you soon and happy sewing.